On a scale of 1 to 5, physicians rated their confidence in discussing screening versus diagnostic mammography a 4.42. However, those same physicians rated their overall knowledge on the subject an average of 3.3. Welcome back everybody, my name is James Xu and today I have the pleasure of interviewing Dr. An Shu Sha who is the Director of Women's Imaging here in SDMI over here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Today we actually get to talk about and you get to share with us what is the difference between diagnostic versus screening mammograms. So thank you again for your time, Doctor. Absolutely. Mammography is the gold standard for the detection of breast cancer. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of confusion about when to order a mammogram and also the differences between a screening and a diagnostic mammogram. And we hope through this video that that will help clear up some of the confusion. What is the difference between a screening and diagnostic mammogram? That's a very good question. A screening mammogram is for patients in the general population who walk in and typically have no symptoms whatsoever. A diagnostic mammogram, however, will be in a patient who has a clinical symptom or a symptom that they find themselves that they're concerned about. It's also for patients that also have a history, a prior history of surgery, for example, a ductal carcinoma in situ or an invasive breast cancer. And it's also for patients who've had an abnormal screening mammogram in the past. In addition, a diagnostic mammogram is actually performed with the radiologist present at the time the patient comes in for their procedure. So the radiologist is able to make specific recommendations, additional pictures, and uh, evaluate the patient directly at the time that they're in the office. When should a screening mammogram be ordered? Well, currently the uh, American College of Radiology recommends the screening mammograms beginning at the age of 40. In patients that are over 40, they should be asymptomatic and have just a normal average risk of breast cancer. Sometimes patients under the age of 40 are also recommended to have a screening mammogram. Typically they are also asymptomatic patients, but they may have an increased risk of breast cancer. What would constitute an increased risk of breast cancer? For patients that have a known mutation or genetic syndrome, or patients that have a first degree relative with a BRCA mutation, which is a genetic mutation, also patients that have had a history of chest radiation between the ages of 10 and 30, and also patients that may have had a prior biopsy proven diagnosis of lobular neoplasia, atypical ductal hyperplasia, or ovarian cancer. Also in patients with a first degree family history, uh, for patients that have a mother or a sister diagnosed with breast cancer, we do recommend a mammogram 10 years before the age of that family member's diagnosis. For example, if a patient's mother was diagnosed with breast cancer at the age of 45, then we would recommend the patient have a mammogram at the age of 35. So when would it be appropriate for a clinician to order a diagnostic mammogram? There are some very specific indications for ordering a diagnostic mammogram. Specifically, when a patient presents with a clinical symptom, such as an area of pain, a palpable abnormality, a nipple discharge, or even skin changes. Another reason for ordering a diagnostic mammogram would be if they've had a personal history of breast cancer. Another reason would be as if uh, we've seen a previous abnormal mammogram in the past and we request additional imaging, and that's at the radiologist's discretion. The only other thing I'd like to add is to clarify patients that have had a history of breast cancer. Our follow-up for these patients include a six-month mammogram for the next two years and then resuming screening mammography after two years. Dr. Shaw, thank you so much for sharing with us and really clarifying and breaking down for us the difference between a screening and a diagnostic mammogram. I know that there's so many people in our audience that are watching that have so many questions and I know you cleared so much of that up. And don't forget everybody, in the description box you can find our website, phone number, and email. If you have any questions of any type, please uh, email us or find us, and we'll see each other soon. Dr. Shah, thank you again. My pleasure.